Good morning, everyone. On the heels of that statement, um, I want to reiterate the position that for the Prime Minister at this point to be proposing to the people of St. Lucia that he is going to go to the market steps to outline his budget plans is unacceptable and disrespectful. The Prime Minister passed an appropriations bill of over $1.4 billion and has not felt it necessary to account to the people how he is going to spend that money. And the substitute of going to the market steps to make a presentation to the citizens of this country on something as serious as a budget and running the country should not be accepted and cannot be accepted. But many of us are not surprised. This is the same Prime Minister up to now refuses to tell the nation what is happening with Greinberg. Same Prime Minister who refuses to acknowledge his wanton ways in Rochmel. It's the same Prime Minister who refuses to address the situation with Lamberts. This is the same Prime Minister who refuses and has gone beyond the constitution of our country every single time as it relates to impacts. But more significantly, any attempt by anyone to suggest that five to stay alive is the economic plan of the United Workers' Party, then you're fooling yourself. Five to stay alive is one part of our overall economic plan. A significant part addressing a specific sector of our society. A sector of our society that has been forgotten. A sector of our society that has been taken advantage of. And that sector are the pensioners of our country who are living on a fixed income. Of unemployed people who have no income and more than likely no savings. And then people who are already impoverished. That the policies, the fiscal policies of this government over the last four and a half years have deprived them of the livelihood that they need. And Five to Stay Alive specifically addresses that segment of society. A segment of society that we believe that have become incredibly cynical about government and about politicians. A segment of the society that no longer wants to hear about just words of hope, but actually want to see and know how they are going to benefit and how they can one day become part of the middle class of our society. A group of people who have already put their work in and would expect that a country would take care of them, now find themselves hurled into a corner, being deprived and being oppressed. I want to read again my statement that I made on the boulevard. Five to stay alive. The immediate reduction and ultimate removal of the value added tax. And here's the part that we all seem to forget. We will find a more creative and less onerous way of re revenues now generated by VAT. The United Workers' Party is not going to be so arrogant to believe that in opposition and without consultation of both the civil service, without the consultation of international organizations and civil society, that we would just impose new measures. But I am saying to you that the philosophy of the United Workers' Party is that we believe that VAT cannot work that in our consultations with business people and with the average person in this country and the more deprived people of our country, that cannot be targeted to help them. That has become an onerous tax on the economy. All of us can see it for ourselves. It is strangleholding our country. And we must find a way of raising revenues that allows us to take care of the more deprived people in our society and at the same time allowing our economy to grow. And I always say this, the fundamental difference between the United Workers Party and the Labour Party is the United Workers Party believes we must earn 
our tax revenues. The Labour Party believes that they are entitled to it. And it would appear that that level of entitlement began with the arrival of Dr. Anthony. Another word for Kennyomics is plantocracy economics. Because it's only in the days of plantocracy that a landlord would impose taxes on the people who were working the lands and not care about the conditions of their work or their living conditions, but was more concerned about his own living standards. But when one sees where the history and the heritage of Dr. Anthony and that a massa mentality. And you can change your name, but you cannot change who you are. And it's a long time for me to say that, but unfortunately the evidence is there to support the fact that the Labour Party is an uncaring government. And a government that has been more concerned about raising monies to pay $11 million for a bridge that should have cost five to pay $34 million for a road that should have cost 15, to justify increasing allocations to Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the justification for paying hospital bills for people who are hacks, to make sure that party supporters' children go to the best schools while you cut the subsidy on the feeding program and you cut the subsidy on the, the bus transportation program. The Labour Party could no longer call themselves a socialist party. They are not a party with a conscience, and they clearly are not a party with a heart. And United Work Party wants to make it very clear. We are going to grow the economy, but we are not going to grow the economy on the backs of the less fortunate of the society, who not only don't have monies, but find it difficult to stand up for themselves. I want to say to them, that today they have a champion. They have a champion in the United Workers' Party who have embraced new candidates who clearly have that conscience, who clearly have that heart, and have a track record for standing up for them. But I want to end and say to us all that Dr. Anthony is going to the market steps not because he believes that he's accountable to the people and the taxpayers of this country. That's not why he's presenting a 15-point plan. He's presenting a 15-point plan in reaction to the five to stay alive. Because the five to stay alive has highlighted the feelings of him and his party. And I continue to say this, that Dr. Anthony walks around this country and he sees nothing wrong. He goes to the schools and sees nothing wrong. When he goes to his constituency branch and mothers come to him to beg for money for pampers or for food or to send their children to school, he sees absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I can tell you in walking around this country, people are fed up. People want to see a change. People want to see hope. And the United Workers' Party itself had problems. We changed, we listened, because we know that the business of the people's business is too important. The livelihoods of people are too important, and that we must set aside our own egos and whatever arrogance we may have, we must set it aside and put a structure in place of a political party that can deliver to the people of this country the rescue they need. So as we indicated in my statements, that in the following weeks, the United Workers' Party will roll out it is its economic plan for recovery. And that the five to stay alive is part of that plan. An essential part dealing with people who have lost hope. And we're not giving them hope in terms of better days. We're giving them hope to put money in their pockets. Because the United Workers' Party believes that the revenues that were collected by the government under VAT are better put in the pockets of the people and to allow them to spend. It is that spending that is going to strengthen our economy. It is that spending that is going to create the recovery, not by putting the money into the coffers of the government. And we all have to question where the money gone.
because over the last three years, the economy has contracted, unemployment continues to increase, and worse than that is that we're now almost paying twice as much in interest payments than we were five years ago. That the total debt of this country stands at $2.9 billion. And I know a lot of solutions don't understand the significance of that. But that extra $80 million in interest payments that we're paying every year is money that could have gone into health care, money that could have gone into the education system, money that can go into an entrepreneurship program, money that can go in to help this country and to help the people and to ease the pain or to ease the squeeze. So with that, I pass over my colleague, Mr. Guy Joseph, to further articulate on these points.